Okay, so I have here a collection from Angel Arl. And uh, basically, it's just a bunch of obscure games. Sure enough, I looked through. Yeah, I have never heard of any of these games. Well, a couple. Well, okay. So, <laughs> I've never played most of these games, and I had never heard of most of them. So that, that doesn't count for all of them. But um, here's the Alkahest. So there's a translation project for this. All right. Square presents 1993 HAL Laboratory. What? So, uh, I won't be able to show you too much of all of these, of the games. I can show you a little bit of each one, basically. Let me just get my microphone to stop crusting. Why are you crusting, microphone? Microphone, stop. Okay, good. Alkahest is from HAL. Its music is extremely used in Mario World hacks. I mean, it sounds awesome. The plot of the game is very much a plot of the 80s, 90s, which is strong, buff, barbarian dude with a giant sword goes against the evil lord. Now, if we have a big, strong, barbarian dude, he has to be a caring father. I like my barbarians to be, um... Absentee dads. <laughs> you know, that's, um, that's cool. That's just how I grew up. Not with an absentee dad. I'm talking about playing video games where there were absentee dads. How many RPGs did you play where the dad was just nowhere in sight? It was just an uncle. Or Pokemon mom. Or a phone. <clears throat> I'm just gonna, you know, get to the gameplay for a bit. Yeah, I hear that curb. Is this a, a flying goblin? It's fucking Piccolo. Kill him, lizard men. I still don't know what kind of game this is going to be. I mean, part of me thinks it's going to be something like Zelda, but I mean, a little Golden Axe, maybe? Could be turn-based RPG. I am a guardian, a protector of this world. The evil star is shining in the sky again. It happens once every thousand years. I hope you're the hero I've been searching for. Take this blade and shield. There's a spinning slash, too. Hmm. Thank you, Spark, for telling me the story again. Whoa! I feel like this is going to be like a... kind of a dangerous world to live in. These enemies respawn very quickly. Oh. What the fuck? Well, I just love the SNES sound fonts. Like, or the, the, the chipset, I guess, is the best way to describe it, right? But... 
Yeah, this is Kirby and Secret of Mana. Well, there's different sound fonts per game. Fire auras from your sword. It's so Zelda. I mean, I would have really liked this if I got... Because I was a huge Secret of Mana fan. Like, I would replay that game, like, every four months. I would start a new game of it. So... Having another game that was somewhat like that and actually played as good as this, which is, you know... The thing is, you're a tall dude. In, um... Zelda, your your chibi is how how they say it, <clears throat> and even Secret of Mana, you're not like like the characters are kind of small. In a game like this, you're tall, so you have to like, you know, you like account for that a little bit. But I would have loved this. Shame this didn't come to the West. There's just treasure everywhere. You can also get a partner, apparently. Continue? Okay. Listen. The name of this segment is We Move Fast. Well, not really, but you know what I mean. So, in order to check out more games, I'm going to move on. But I'm going to say that's a strong start. That game looks fucking dope. This one's called <laughs> GS Mikami GS Mikami 2D action game by Natsume based off of the anime of the same name. For younger viewers out there, I would not recommend looking up this anime in your free time. Well, well what do you think they're going to do after hearing that? It's gonna go- it's gonna get huge! This series- this anime series is gonna get huge! Everyone's gonna know about it, dude! As soon as they translate it, get some dubs on it! There are viewers that say they- well, one viewer says they have this on VHS. That face? is 45% I. Report 1. 24 something, something, something. Okay, immediately I'm getting Michael Jackson Moonwalker vibes. Also, I just wanted to mention again, that Weird Al movie was great. I really, really liked it, and I laughed a lot. I feel like maybe if one criticism, uh, lose ten minutes. But I'm just being a jerk when I say that. I, I fucking loved that movie. I don't want to spoil any of it. I don't want to say anything about it other than... Just watch it, even if you don't know who Weird Al is, or you only know, like, one or two songs, it's... 
it's very entertaining. And Daniel Radcliffe was... <laughs> he was good. He was really good in the role. Like, completely silly and just over the top, but also... Uh, it's good. And Pee Wee Herman makes a cameo appearance. And I just rewatched Pee Wee's Big Adventure, and that movie has the best ending of any movie ever. Aside from this Weird Al movie. <laughs> Paging Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman. Uh, this game is fine. It's it's very simple. It's like a beat em up. Well, not even a beat em up. It's just a side scrolling uh, action game. You get to kill some ghosts on a train like Final Fantasy VI. There's really not much to it, as far as I can see. But you get, like, superpowers, and you get to kill some creepy, spoopy hands and stuff. That, that counts for a lot in my book. Really nice-looking uh, uh, gra graphics and clean. Everything is very clean. Imagine being the dude on that news, uh, in the train just trying to read his newspaper. Yeah. Again, I, New York City, this is kind of what it's like to ride the subway. Oops, wrong button. Who are these fucking creeps? Train with an upstairs area. Oh. Oh. The game is fine, and you get to collect cheesecake. Um, I'm okay with that. It's a little easy so far, but, you know. Maybe later. I don't know. Oh, man. I think I pressed that button at the wrong time. Ah, uh, I lost the power. Castlevania or Mega Man, this is not. However, it's a fun little game, and, I, and if you're a fan of the anime series, and you get a game that's not shit, that's got to be kind of nice. Yeah, and you even get little cutscenes that probably reflect something that happened in the show, and their eyes take up 45% of their heads. Pretty sick. This game's called Merchen Adventure Cotton from D D Datam Polystar. Oh, I was expecting 1,000. Wait. Oh, to joy. Oh, it's one of these types of games. Uh, what's the name of it, chat? Gradius? 
that was like this. Well, then Gradius became Parodius, and, and a lot of other games did similar things. Shmup. We called them shmups back in the day. Shoot em up. I will say this is a pretty good job at finding games I've never heard of on the system because I've watched a lot of SNES Drunk <laughs> and various other channels that just compile and, you know, talk about SNES games. Oh, sorry about your eyes, chat. And I've also done, like, a ton of my own segments of just, like, you know, unknown NES games, unknown SNES games. So far, all three games have had a pretty... Pretty decently long intro cut animated cutscene. Well, I say animated, but just like freeze frame. So you're a magical witch? I don't know, I'm, I'm making an assumption here. <clears throat> and um, otherwise it's just UN Squadron. Well, Gradius in particular, but, you know. This game just got a reboot on the Switch. Or reboot sequel on the Switch, really. Clown? Look at the clown. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and issue a photosensitivity warning. Um, because... Back in the day, no one gave a fuck. I was like, hey, you know, someone in like the playtesting department was like, hey, should we cut out some of that flashing? And the evil game developers were like, nah. I just don't think it was as widely known about. <clears throat> the loathsome cockmonglers. <laughs> they were just- that's- that's- <laughs> they were just like, nope. Nope, fuck it. <laughs> let- let him- let him suffer. And then, you know, and you game over? I really do hate it though, like Zelda 2, with the flashing when you die, it, it really is just annoying. Like, even if you don't have photosensitivity, it's horrendously annoying to look at. And I'm not sure why it was always so widely used. I guess it was just an easy way to, like... You know, the thing is happening on screen. But god, I fucking hate it. Because you died, fuck you. I guess that was the logic, yeah? She's saying Pikachu? I don't think she's saying Pikachu chat. Alright. Game is fine. It's fine. It, it, it's, it's exactly what I expected. Pika. Oh.
by the way, some of these have English um, patches applied already. This next one, <coughs> two weeks, um, Magical Poppin. 2D action game was Japan only. Pretty cool game, surprised it wasn't more well known nowadays. It's expensive to get a real copy of this, has never been ported to anything. Oh, I've played this one. I'm pretty sure I've played this one. I just, I recognize the, the character and the ducks. This is a good one. I'll play a little bit of it, just because it's cool. Vinny, please play Lawnmower again. <laughs> Lawnmower Man. Again? I mean, wait, I've never played that before. Vinny, those are penguins. Oh. Well, I, I really wanted them to be ducks. Oh, yeah, they are penguins. The one thing about this that I could see getting annoying, or maybe you just get used to it, is when you turn around, the camera is very overzealous and following the action. Oh. Hey! I love games with one sound effect. But yeah, just a cute little side scroller, and she kind of, you know, she's wearing the Link outfit, kind of. Well, not really. She's just got a sleeping cap. Sleeping cap equals Link. <clears throat> Vinny, I think you played a different game in the series. Not 100% sure. I didn't know there was a, a, another game in the series. Someone said this is like a faster Zelda 2. I mean, there there are a couple things like going through the chimney reminded me of Zelda 2. Um, and you have a sword, but Zelda 2 is such a specific thing that when people say this reminds me of Zelda 2, I'm like, well, that just seems like a melee action game side scroller. Zelda 2 just is way more specific in my mind. Though. In this game, you have up thrust and down thrust. So maybe you're onto something, chat member. Infernax was very Zelda 2. Infernax was like a good combination of Zelda 2 and Castlevania. And even Mega Man a little bit too, but... Yeah, I liked Infernax a lot. I thought that was cool. Does it... Bounce. I don't know, but the reading rainbow theme is now over. No. Oh, we got a boss. Yeah. Yosh, Yosh. <laughs> yeah, it's just a fun little game. Not really blowing me away, but also way better. Way better than, um... A lot of its contemporaries, I feel. Like, it's just a solid, well-controlling, fun game. Melfin Stories was a beat-em-up that was Japan-only. Sadly, a fan translation does not exist. Melfind? No, not Milf. Hey. 
ASCII. I never felt comfortable calling it ASCII. L, Course, Lemon, and Nora. <laughs> um, they look like Fire Emblem characters a little bit. I'm gonna go for just L. Lemon. The music sounds flat. And then, that started quick. It's usually the Kraken happens a lot later in a video game. We, we got the Kraken immediately. Are those, like, lizard creatures? I guess we're gonna find out. Yeah, they are. They're fucking reptilians. <laughs> Someone wrote this music is stinky. How do you smell music, chat member? That would be an interesting thing to have. You know how, like, some people can, like... Um... When they listen to music, they see, like, colors, or they have, like, colors in their head? I forget the synesthesia. What about stinkesthesia? Where, instead of seeing music, you smell it. What does this music smell like, chat? It smells like midi, cranberry, cotton candy, corn. Boot stink. Of course it was gonna- always! Listen, I can't blame chat, because my most recent Mario cartoon... You know... You, you know what the question was to Mario, so like... Fair. A used toy from Goodwill. That boss's name was Captain Foot, and I didn't see that. Um, this one is my least favorite of the games. I know it's doing, like, a beat-em-up, and it's got co-op, so that's, like, that's, like, a big... That's, like, a big boon for a game like this. Um, I've played better beat-em-ups. Oh, wow, now we're actually attacking the Kraken. Yeah, begin a sausage. It's not bad by any means. Like, I would have probably enjoyed this, but... I'm not, like... You know, it's a very simple beat-em-up. Like, it's only one plane of movement, for one. I don't... detect... combos. It's really not a lot of things that you can do. Um... I feel like that, that sword could use a swish. You know, like a, a movement trail. Well. I think I, I got... Yeah, I've got enough... Oh, I can select a new character. Of course. Vinny, I'm pressing start, but nothing happens. Oh, oh, no, no, you got a sub. To join? No, you don't. You don't. I'm kidding. Come on. Alright, here's one called Ninja Warriors. Now, I watched a lot of Ninja Warrior. I don't know if this has... I don't know if it's that. It says, this one it may be a stretch to call obscure, but I think it deserves more attention. This is a single plane beat em up by Natsume, a sequel to Taito Arcade Game. Already really like that goblin man. There's just something so 
wonderful about oh dictator goblin man um about snes like intro stories mulk banglar and mulk <laughs> some really great names this got a remaster on switch oh Milk is what you get when you leave milk out for a few days. Now that's a smell. Ninja. Kunoichi. Kamaitachi. I believe is how you say that. Weight 1,540 pounds. <laughs> alright, alright. Oh, man. Holy shit. Do I get to ever use the nunchuck? Oh, yeah, you have to hold up. So yeah, this dude is, is pretty slow. Oh, I don't think you press up. There's something you have to do to activate it. It's the same punch button as punch, rather, but... Brilliant move, fellas. Attack the giant metal hulking mechanoid man with a knife. There actually are some combos. You can lift people up. You can slam them. You've got your num chunk. There's like a heft to the character. I, I quite like the way this game plays. Vinny, oh my god, I played this so much as a kid, but I didn't remember the name. Thank you for showing me this. I mean, you could thank chat member. I don't know, um, chat member made the collection, but you're welcome. I, I also like discovering games that I played as a kid that for I forgot about. Scripted. Missiles and shit. Yeah, it's a fun game. It's it's not too um It's not too difficult to pick up, but I can see that it would be a little tough to master. Um a chat member wanted to see how the other characters control. So instead of controlling both of the other characters, I'll show you one other characters. I'm going to go for Quin Quinoichi. Quino Quinoichi. Chat is saying Quinoichi is good. Damn, he was close to boss. Ah, oh, well. Well, Konoichi has, um, knives. Is fast. It's pretty similar otherwise. How do you do the thing with the range?
Someone said die for a surprise. I know I had fast forward bound. Hang on a second. Yo, what? What was that? Is she like a zombie or a mechanoid or a zombie mechanoid or something? Damn. Android. Pretty cool. They said three androids in the intro. I, I think I was reading... Yeah, faked! I was reading the uh, chat when that was happening. This is Operation Logic Bomb. Okay. What does this music smell like, chat? G graphite? Rust. How about this wet, rusty metal? And Seinfeld. Damn, what a title screen. All right, this one's top down. Oh, this is, um... Fucking... Contra. Like, top down Contra. Super C, Alien Wars, yeah. Rakari Warriors, yeah, there, there's like... Oh, there's a number of games like this. I like games like this. Scan mode? Did it say scan mode IBS? a little mindless, but I'm sure... Well, not mindless entirely, because you still have to, like, avoid shots. But... It's pretty fun. I want to see some upgrades. Like, that's the thing about Contra I like, is when you get your upgrades. There's always, like, a, a nice balance of which upgrade you want versus which one you need. And when you get them, and then dying, and then returning to the pea shooter. Oh, you do have a... another weapon. You get a shotgun. It's... yeah, it's kind of cool. This would be a fun co-op game. I don't think it is, but this this is something... Like, I'm trying to think of the stuff I was playing on Super Nintendo. So, I always loved co-op games, and there were not enough of them. So, whenever there was, like, um, a co-op game that was competent, it was like, oh shit, because my older cousin and I, not the club cousin, never the club cousin, we would, um, we would play... 
just whatever we could find. So, you know, one of them was like Joe and Mac, which was a uh, caveman game. They're like doing a remake of Joe and Mac, I think. This is interesting. So Joe and Mac was okay, but there were definitely a lot of co-op games that were shit. But it was hard to find good ones, so that's why we ended up playing Secret of Mana over and over and over again. Psycho Dream, 2D action game by Telenet. This game is just weird. So, well, the name like Psycho Dream. So yeah, I w you know, I wish I could like go back in time and give my cousin and I the best co-op games available at the time. I just didn't know what they were. This is also on Switch Online. This doesn't feel that obscure anymore since it's on the, the Switch. Well, is this on the um, Japanese Switch? Both? All regions, really? Oh, they're putting some weird stuff on there. You fight the final boss to Ave Maria, no joke. Well, how the fuck did they get the license to Ave Maria? No, but I'm- what- did they get it from the Pope? Did they, like, pray? That was going on for a while, so... I feel like I've seen this. Or I might have even played this. Yeah, this might have been on a previous obscure... Um, SNES showcase. I've definitely played this. Or, yeah, I mean, Jeremy Parrish, I watch his videos too. If he covered it, then I definitely saw his video of it. Penicular soundtrack a little bit. Someone in chat said the game is weird, but also boring as fuck. I mean, the weird stuff probably happens like well into the game. But, yeah, I mean, controls aren't the best. They're fine. Yeah, you get knee blades. That's your sec- that's your upgrade. First up- oh. First upgrade is... Last time you played this, you said it was weird after you went into a vent and saw a fish or something like that. Well, that's very specific. Um, I'm not going to be able to, you know, find all the cool stuff, but if you want to, you know, look it up, that's cool. Also, you probably could watch me play more of this in a previous SNES showcase. So, again, I can't expect viewers to do all the homework because I have, like years and years and hundreds and hundreds of hours of videos but you know there will be repeats
This one's Twin B. Not overly obscure. I would argue this isn't obscure. <clears throat> I feel like I might have played Twin B, or maybe I just watched other people play it. I, I might have? I mean, I've gone through a good chunk of the SNES library, but I mean, I forget everything anyway, so... Ow. Gun. Vinny, you should keep a spreadsheet. You think I'm gonna be making a spreadsheet, chat member? <laughs> That's 12 years worth of spreadsheet. Charge, attack, and jump. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, jump. Whoa, big jump. Big punch. Pretty good. Twin B is usually a shmup. Well, Twin B was in Parodius, right? Or something? NES Twin B, okay. And this has co op. <laughs> this fucking voice. I actually, I think this one is really good, because it controls great. It's got a couple unique elements. You got little Mogus is following you, that's cool. Um... Yeah, it's... nice visually. I think it's good. It's got its own little style. And then you die. Alright, so that's Twin B. This one's called Umihara Kawase. Really difficult 2D platformer. Okay, I, this is completely... Uh... Wait, 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 wait. I played this too. Have I? It seems familiar, but I don't... This was on Did You Know Gaming? Repeats on stream. Today is a repeat Sunday stream. Well, you know. Somewhat. <laughs> Again, if you gotta submit... Listen, if you wanna submit a pack, you gotta do your homework, man. I mean, I don't mind checking things out for a couple minutes if I've played them already. It's no problem. Especially considering there are people that are going to watch that have not watched the previous video if they were like a couple years ago. It's not that big of a deal. However, um, I may as well have not played this because I don't remember it at all. So, I, if I did, I would have said something like, Wow, this is a really unique game. And like, oh wow, there's kind of like a physics thing happening here, which is kind of unique for the Super Nintendo. But yeah, there's like realistic looking fish walking around. And, and then you just, what, you catch them and then you keep them? Strong central mechanic. 
That is true. Uh-oh. I'm not really sure how to get past that obstacle. Um, I, if you can reel yourself in, I, I didn't find the button for it. Up or down? Oh, you gotta press down! Okay, that's why I was confused, because you actually have to press down to reel yourself in. The UI is garbage. <laughs> There's just words in the middle of the screen. <laughs> like, why, why are they in the middle of the screen? Yeah, but I have played that. Um, pretty good central mechanic, though. Now we're going to get to the Genesis, which I have played way less Genesis games. This one's called Alicia Dragoon. And uh, 2D action game by Game Arts that worked with Gainax. <laughs> or is it Gainax? That word, chat, that one. So yeah, I didn't grow up with the Genesis, and um, I feel like when I've done obscure game collections, it's mostly been Super Nintendo. So there's still a lot of stuff on the Genesis that I've never heard of or have never seen. This is also on NSO. This is not obscure. One of Pat the NES Punk's most popular videos, really. Is this the one with the boobas from the Pat video? Wait, how long did, until you get to the booba? Just for research purposes. At the end? Gotta be careful. You run out of lightning very, very easily. It's it's a cool central attack gimmick, but you gotta uh, space your lightning powers out appropriately. None selected HP, level one. I guess these are your helpers. They follow you and and stuff. Yeah, you, you get different familiars. I don't really know what they do. The final boss is a purple demon with uncensored purple booba. Yeah, can you get me a link to that but censored, please? I'll censor it. I'll send I'll put Limmy's face over it. I just wanna I wanna know why this is like a thing. I want I just wanna know. Chat, I just wanna know. Let's see. That's not it. Grind his vegetables? Wow. 
play it on Switch, Twitch won't be able to do anything about it. Okay, I'll take a, I'll take the uncensored version. <laughs> That's fine. I think the familiar system is cool. Wow, it's interesting that there would be um, Rick Astley in this in this game as well. Wait, if you die, you have to go all the way back to the title screen. Oof. Vinny, I just looked, and I didn't see any booba. Vinny, your rank was Worm Master. Well, sometimes you gotta... You, you gotta... Let the worm see the rainy day, if you know what I mean. You just, you just gotta... Retrieve the wormlet. Yeah, chat, this doesn't seem overly... I don't know. Let's, let's take a look. This doesn't seem too bad to me. I I'm gonna say that the, um... The booba was greatly overstated. It's a cool enemy design. Uh, there's some weird prolapses happening on it, which make me a little uncomfortable, but I don't- I don't really see... ...very much in the way of- of boobalias. I mean, a little bit. It's fine, chat. You can't get banned because there's no Neeple. Let, let's, uh, let's move on to Battle Mania... Daiginjo? I don't know what that was that I was looking at there. Yeah, tinnitus sound effects. Yeah, flashing lights. Great. Wow. Okay, already. We get feet, we get loud, horrible noises, and we get flashing. Oh my god, it's just so... 1995, the far-off distant year of 1995. I thought I was going to say Ohio. Like, man, Ohio looks very different in, 2000, in 1995. Sorry, 1995. You know what? That's a very good face. And the eyes are only, like, 10% of the head. Chainsaw beam. If I get killed, it's your fault. Oh, it's a shmup. Well... Okay. I mean, it's pretty standard. But then that this happens, and that's fucking awesome. Just kind of wasted it. Oh, speed. 
Vinny, the final boss has a tiny penis. All right, listen. I don't believe you. Vinny, there's a button to switch sides. Uh... Yeah... None of it is bound properly. It's weird, even though I've never owned a Genesis and actively disliked Sega's marketing campaigns and all that fun stuff, I have a weird nostalgia for Genesis at this point in my life. Like, I didn't have one as a kid, but I played, you know, Aladdin and DuckTales, Corkscrew, ooh, and a couple other things. Um, but the, the thing is, I have a lot of nostalgia for Castlevania Bloodlines, and so when I hear, like, little sound effects or see things graphically that remind me of Bloodlines... I enjoy. So, yeah, didn't grow up with a Genesis. Only played it a handful of times as a kid. But I can't help but feel... some nostalgia juice. Yeah, chainsaw. Ouch. I, I mean, ouch. Satan on level one. Back in the day, us real gamers got Satan on level one. Um, Bishojo Senshai Sailor Moon. It's a beat em up based off of anime Sailor Moon. Now, who is Sailor Moon? Okay, I at least know who Sailor Moon is. I, I know the things. Yeah, I know this. I only know this. I know that her name is Sailor Moon. I know that there's a Sailor Jupiter. And that there's planets. And, uh... I, does she sail? It, she, she's magic, right? This it, Was this the beginning of magical anime girl <laughs> genre? <laughs> Who was the first anime magical girl? Chat. M milk... Milky? Minky Momo? Oh, that was a waste. Why did someone say Milky Momo? I know why. That kind of looks like a little Twitch chat dude with a mushroom hat in the background there. I'm probably missing some buttons, like, considering the Genesis Genesis, and has the three buttons. Hang on, let me, let me actually try to configure that real quick. Hang on. Up, down, left, right. Uh, A, B, C, start. Guess that's fine. No, there's no more buttons. <coughs> Osamu Tezuka's Princess Knight is considered the foundation for magical girls. That's cool, but do you know who the foundation of the of rock and roll is? <laughs> Well, you see, it started with the blues.
He is white. Chubby Checker. I met Chubby Checker. <laughs> it's like one of the few celebrities I've met. Good noise. I don't know, who, who came first? Fats Domino or Chubby Checker? I forget. Because one of those guys was like, boy, that's a great idea. I'm just gonna name myself the other one. Infinite glass to break. Fats Domino, Chubby Checker. Don't forget about, um... <laughs> obese backgammon. <laughs> This game is silly. It's a very basic beat-em-up. It's a very basic beat-em-up. Um... Double tap, tap a direction, then jump immediately for a super jump. Oh, okay. Well, that's a control that is not very obvious. And, you know, there's other characters that do other things, which is nice. Plumpy Pawn. Ugh. This just keeps going. We'll, we'll do Double Dragon 2. Now, is this obscure? It's fucking Double Dragon. Probably know about Double Dragon 2 on the NES, but Genesis Port was Japan only, and it's infamous over there. In a magazine from the 90s, it was rated as a bottom three game on, a, on the console in Japan. It's an awful port of the arcade version. The only redeeming thing about this port is the music is actually good. This port isn't too well known here in the US and it's for good reason. Looks like shit already, <laughs> yep. Well, rest in peace. That's how you know they're the bad guys. Oh boy. Oh yeah. No, I can I already feel the shit. It's seeping. That's a horrible noise. Really, really terrible controls. Yeah, 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 beat me, yeah! Mad slave! I'm pressing other buttons. Someone says it sounds like Beat It by Michael Jackson. You mean it sounds like Eat It by Weird Al Yankovic. This game is barely playable. It's really, really bad. I, you know, I can't say I've ever been happier to see one of my, um, playable characters in a video game die... ...than in this game. Ugh. I, I really... I really don't know how this was approved. There's slowdown, the controls are sluggish... The AI is cheap. Yeah, I'm not crazy about the music either, like... If that's the only redeeming factor here, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't do this anymore, chat. I cannot do it anymore, not for another second. This one's called El Viento. 
2D action game by Wolf Team, who would later be known for making the Tales of series. It's actually the second game in a trilogy, with the other two games being Ernest Evans and Annette Returns. It's a bit of a janky game, but it's got some charm. It's something that's either going to be good or bad, depending on the person. Sure is a lot of anime. Oh boy. Well, this is the opposite of Double Dragon. That game moved slower than... Slower than turds. Yes, that's what I will go with. After searching for a moment, turds was the only word that came to mind. Mow mow. Don't you know about the turds? Well, everybody knows about the turds. Well, this game is like a lot. A lot very soon. In this game, you are in 1930 Chicago and trying to stop Al Capone from getting the Necronomicon. You know, I believe you, and I don't want to know anything otherwise. I think you're right, because I see gangsters. Like Dick Tracy. boy. Chat, this is... It's good. Like, it controls okay. You know, it's functional. It's fine. I think what's killing me is the color palette. It's one of the things. It's just hard to look at. And yeah, it's, it's not really all that exciting. And it's kind of just... Do the thing, do the thing, do the thing. Wow, brown and, like, greenish color... Okay. Okay, and then that. And then that. And then a pink car. I like the car graphics are cool. Yeah, the soundtrack is fine. We've seen a lot of fancy game overs today. It's a lot of fancy game overs. Um Magical Taruto Kun. <laughs> This is a 2D platformer made by Game Freak. Oh, the game's engine would later be used for Pulse Man. Based off of a manga and anime series of the same name, while it's not as good as Pulse Man, it could be pretty fun when you learn the level design. Never released in the US. I like a lot of these uh, Japan-only exclusives have just a screaming, like, what sounds like a screaming child. After the visual diarrhea that was the previous game, this is nice to look at. The range is bad. I was gonna mention the game Lagoon again earlier because I was playing- that first game I played reminded me of a better version of Lagoon. Where you had like three extra pixels of sword compared to your body. Um, this isn't as bad as that, but, you know, you don't get a whole lot of range with your weapon. Is this... Oh, okay. I thought this was, like, kind of a Metroidvania, but it's not. Uh, 
Oh, there's actually, like, normal-sized humans. There's another game in the series where the person's weapon is their tongue, and they just lick everything, is what a chat member is saying. I'm gonna leave it at that. I mean, I think we got the... We got the picture. We got the picture. Mega Bomberman. It's a port of a PC Engine game called Bomberman 94. While Bomberman himself isn't obscure, the port of this game isn't talked about much. It's not too bad, but it can have some annoying slowdown at times. Music isn't as good as the PC Engine original. Okay, so I don't think I've ever heard of this, so fair enough. Sperm. <laughs> this music. Temporary Secretary. Wow. That, that's a that's a hell of an intro. The music was both ominous and confusing. Bomberman. My first Bomberman was Bomberman 64. I don't know if I've told this story. I probably have. I thought Bomberman was that. And then when I ended up playing classic Bomberman, I was confused because I was like, wait a minute, this isn't like what Bomberman 64 did. Because I was dumb. Bomberman 64, not Hero. I thought it had good multiplayer. Like, it was it was still a fun game. The single player left a little... It left a little to be uh, desired. But it wasn't completely terrible. It's just, when you see, like, what Bomberman is, you know, classically known for, it was a weird... It was a weird style of gameplay where they tried to bring it into 3D. And then they just were like, nah, we don't need to do that. We'll just do the classic stuff. Oh. Let me tell you something. Oh, 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 I'm a- Oh. I'm dumb. Oops. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. That's a lot of extra time I have to wait. Um, I like Bomberman, and this is- this is Bomberman. So I- I like this by extension. It seems... completely Bomberman fine. Uh-oh. I pressed start, which for some reason goes back. Oh wait, no, no, it's good. Oh, multi-screen levels now. Bomberman is great, but it's not always the most exciting. Well, that was exciting. Musha! 
is next. Well, it's not as obscure as it used to be thanks to M2 re-releasing it a couple times. I thought it would still be okay to put it on here. Shoot 'em up made by Compile who made all the early Poyo Poyo games. It's part of the Alesti series of games and you control this big mech. It's pretty engaging throughout. And there's some really good songs, though I do think it's a bit of an acquired taste. Musha. Oh shit. Game was it? Um, Solar Striker on the Game Boy was the game I had that was like this. Which was also a game I'd never finished and was I didn't think it was all that great. But you know, when you only have a couple games as a kid, it's not like you can go play something uh something you know is better. It's like, yeah, I have four games, I'll play Solar Striker again. Oh, I'm on level three, time to die and lose again. This is fun. It's like really interesting. Are those like the Japanese style houses just floating? But like mechanical versions of them? Gotta put the plumbing somewhere. Well, well, if it's floating, they can just have a hole. It's like an airplane. Do you hear, ever hear about like people getting killed by frozen turds that fell out of an airplane chat? I'm asking, is that real or is that just some... Or like that one time, um... There was pee that fell out of the plane and it got, like, frozen. In transit, so to speak. And it, like, pierced someone like a javelin. I'm pretty sure that was just a meme image, never mind. But yeah, that, that, that's cool, right? Red frozen Piss Javelin, if anyone needs a new Twitch name. Form forward, form three way. You said three-way. <laughs> yeah, you, you can change the form of your of your ship. It's it's um it's kind of mind numbing, but not in a bad way, but I don't feel like I'm alive right right now. That may be unrelated. I may need to get that looked at, but otherwise it's a perfectly competent game of this type, of which I have played many, and I, I like this. My seal of approval is, would I have liked this when I was younger? And the answer is, yeah, I absolutely would have. But, um, also, it's just a lot of repeating enemies and scenarios, and I've seen these fucking octopus turrets a lot. I was hoping to at least get to a boss, but... Yeah, we're, we're, we're still going. destruction. I, 
think when you take damage, you lose your adds, and you don't just, like, die immediately, so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you've seen it. You've seen it. It's the, it just, it's still going. Panorama Cotton. This is a rail gallery shooter from Success. It's part of the Cotton series. Didn't we play something earlier with Cotton? Very impressive game for the console, similar to Sega's Space Harrier. The only big flaw is that this has a poor frame rate. This game is infamously expensive to get a complete copy for, and even just wanting a cart will be impossible to get cheap. I've noticed a lot of, like, naked nymph... Or, or almost naked nymphs in this collection. Oh yeah, that, that frame rate. Ooh, man, it just... It slows right the fuck down, just chugs. Ambitious. Very ambitious. I respect the hustle. I'm always fascinated by early 3D games on consoles that really weren't meant for 3D. I've done segments about it before, like... We've covered it on the Super Nintendo, of course, but also... Game Boy Advance having a lot of really horrendous 3D games that maybe some very good limited uses of 3D were good on the GBA but there were some games that were fully 3D that just did not did not play good at all and then um even Game Boy Color had some 3D games and those were just I think it went from like oh oh no to abysmal what was the range I'm thinking of Use your magic? Oh, right, you got magic, too. Alright. Well, it's... It's another shooter. The frame rate is not the worst. It's not the best, but it's okay. It's playable. Um... Expensive carts. This is why dumps and emulation exists. Hell yeah. Sid of Valis is a weird, chippy version of Valis 2, which is Japan Japanese-only computers in TurboGrafx-16. Very unpolished game, kind of looks ugly. Also has lo awful localization, and I do mean it so bad they didn't even translate the credits in Game Over screen. I'm waiting you to come... To Vacante, Sid. Megas. <laughs> Megas! Vacante is in danger. Sword of the... Wait, Ice Cream Sword? Oh boy. You can pretty much instantly tell if a game is going to have thought put into it. If your character gets to the edge of the screen... ...and the camera... That's not a Metroid. Yeah, and the camera, it just stays like this. Like, you... In a platformer, you want to be, like, here. So you can see what, you know... What's coming? Yeah, this game is not great. I like it. Oh, you do have double jump. That lizard was a stolen asset? Hand over the sword of Valis. No, I won't. Beep beep!
This one? Wait, 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 wait. Why is it so familiar? Pokemon Genesis bootleg? More like this asset has been stolen. Wow, imagine stealing an asset from this game. Well, I guess if, if it's obscure enough, maybe... A little stinky. Someone said, Is that a pickle map? I saw that too. Yeah, I was like, What the fuck? This feels less impactful than when you host me. I'm gonna be real. Eh, it's all right, Jolly. I pro. Oh, I. I appreciate it. Thank you for the raid. Any little bit helps. Trust me, I'm still just chuffed. I'm chuffed to all hell that people like my streams and actually want to, like, tell people um, to watch my stuff. Ah. Well, Jolly and I are actually going to probably collaborate on something kind of soon-ish. We have uh, a couple ideas. Wide beam. He already spoiled the collab. I mean, the thing is, it's one of two games. <laughs> so, not much of a surprise, but, uh, you know. Yeah, chat, this game is, like... It's functionally... here. Like, you can see that it, all the parts are here. It just, it's, it's like... Separate ingredients put together. I don't know how to explain it. Like, nothing ever really forms into one cohesive thing. What I'm trying to say is it sucks. Alright? <laughs> In oh so many words. I mean, this is a cool thing. You can choose your weapon and uh, your, out your armor. See, now I have wide beam. I guess that's fine. Okay. Please, by all means, continue playing the same music. You will find out when you get to Vicente, you will never win the fight with the Red Fighter Dragon Zaluga. Are you the Red Fighter Dragon, Zaluga? Yeah, I mean, those are some good shake graphics and some good gameplay we got here, too. It's like Kraid, but if Kraid was... Like... Um, I can't think, I'm too tired. I want to be witty, but I can't chat to tonight. Crust. Sure, crud, crust. Yeah, you know, whatever you want, that's fine. Is this fucking soundtrack? What's <laughs> this face? Oh, uh, God. Luckily, this is the last game on the list, so, uh, that Jolly Raid isn't gonna be... They're not gonna be entertained for very long, if this is entertaining at all. 
I forgot about daylight savings too. That kind of threw me off a little bit. Cold, dead alien eyes. Okay, I just found the best part of this game, and it's that, like, liquid. I I'm tempted to say water, but is it? But it reflecting the, the weird, um, nodes. <laughs> Necrodepto. <laughs> I'm going to smash you. Beep, 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 beep. The other best part of the game is that you get different, like, weapons and armor. Beep. Alright, chat. Uh, well, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. That oh, uh, that was that was the Sunday stream. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. I laughed very hard earlier, and we got to learn about some new games today. There's some stuff that I maybe didn't need to learn about. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, crust the microphone. Why is that happening all of a sudden? Is that um the cable? Boy, this cable sucks, and it's expensive to replace too. It's really cool. Um. I think my voice is okay. I managed to last the entirety of the stream and didn't cough too much, and I still have my, I still have my voice, so that's that's positive. Um, thank you for watching, chat. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody that submitted Sunday stream stuff. This week we will do more Mario and Rabbids and a couple other things. I don't know what those things are, but also, I have some pre-recorded stuff that may be interesting and. Uh, Maybe a couple more, like I said, collaborations, like with Jolly. And I forget what else, but other things too. By the way, Against the Storm is so fucking good. It's so it's so good. I, my channel is not going to become an Against the Storm gameplay channel completely, but I'm now playing it like on my free time. So, goddamn. Oh, Frozen Piss Javelin is in chat. Sick. Well, thank you. Hey, thank you for the support, everybody. And um, thank you for the uh, subs and everything. I appreciate it very much. It's been very good. People are really good to me. And I appreciate you very much. And uh, I, I don't take for granted what I have here. So, you know, I wish you all a good night. And I, I, uh, I hope to see you soon with more video games. Goodbye. And uh, sorry for this.